Hello everybody and welcome to a new series of uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! The Duelist of Roses. It's Cooper here and we're gonna be doing a let's play of this game. So let's get into it. Duelist of Roses is a pretty old game from uh, 2000 something, I don't remember. Who cares? Uh, that I used to play as a kid all the time and even though this is a Yu-Gi-Oh! game, it plays nothing like a Yu-Gi-Oh! game. All, I mean all the basic rules of attack and defense points and effects are still there. But, you know, this is going to be talking about, like, ancient, or not ancient, but, uh, old times where there were wars and people were fighting, but the way they fought in this day and age was through monsters. They would summon monsters and have card games, which is kind of weird. So, basically, it's going to be the Lancastrians versus, uh, the other people, I don't remember. So, it's the White Roses versus the Red Roses. If you're a Red Rose, you're on Yugi's team. If you're a White Rose, you're on Kaiba's team. And uh, for this Let's Play, we're going to be joining Yugi's team, and then we'll go back and we're going to join Kaiba's team, just so that you guys can see everything. And look, it's Simon from Yu-Gi-Oh! Forbidden Memories. Okay, this game has a lot of dialogue in the very beginning, so we're going to be skipping most of it. It is, like, super annoying, so let's skip, skip, skip. He's going to be saying he's so happy to see us, he's telling us we're the Rose, Rose Duelist, and then we got to give him our name, which we all know it's Cooper. So let's put that in. And yes. So yeah, this is a very different Yu-Gi-Oh game. It, it plays more like uh, a form of chess, I guess. I mean, it's not chess, but it has a field that's kind of like chess. And what you do is you move your pieces around the field and attack your opponent's monsters. And uh, the field can have different types. Like there could be a forest field, a wasteland field, a mountain field. And uh, yeah, so we're gonna be doing that real soon. But first, we gotta go through a five minute cutscene of him telling us what we are, which is the Rose Duelist. Uh, no, we will not do the practice duel because that would add 20 minutes to this video and forget that. So, what we're gonna do is we're gonna just let him talk to us about trusting our soul and uh, choosing a deck leader. So, this is pretty important. We need to choose a deck leader for our deck that resonates with our soul. Basically, he's gonna give us three starter decks and we get to choose the one we want. So, this time around, and this is random, you will never get these three decks. Uh, I mean, you might get some of the same deck leaders, but they're di very different sometimes. So, interestingly enough, we got an Aqua Sea Serpent deck. We got a Zombie Spellcaster Fiend Aqua deck. Wow, that's a lot of different monsters. And we got a Warrior Beast and Aqua deck. You know what? We're going to do... Huh, this is confusing. Because, honestly, what, the deck leader isn't going to matter too much because what we're going to do is we're going to be trading cards in from another game to change our deck every other episode. So, for now, we're going to pick... No, I've never used the a Wolf Axe wielding before. Let's try that deck out. So, he has the lowest average total of levels, I guess, but who cares? So, yeah, we are going to join... Oh, what's up? Oh, it's Seto. Seto of the White Rose. So, let's let these guys talk a lot because this is going to take forever. Um, but I'm excited. This game is really interesting once you actually get to play it. But they decided that a five-minute cutscene in the beginning of the game with a lot of reading was necessary, which it is not. You could have just said, hey, you're the Rose Duelist. Okay, we are the good guys. Okay, we are the bad guys. Okay, choose your side. Simple. See, we could have done that super quick, but instead... They want to talk to us about harnessing the power of red and white, and these rose cards things, and it, it's it's super annoying. So basically, let me give you the gist of it. There's going to be every every uh, leader, like Seto, or not Simon, but Yugi, will have soldiers or generals, and their generals will be carrying a rose card. So once you are able to defeat a general on their map, then you will re uh, receive the rose card as a reward. And you use that card to uh, open up more areas to fight more generals, which is kind of cool. And once you get all the rose cards, then you win, basically. So if you join the red roses, you're going to try and win the white roses. And if you win, uh, choose the white roses, you're going to try to win the red rose cards. So, yeah. And you can choose either side you want, because after you beat the game, you can restart. I mean, you can continue the game and then you'll be on the other team with your same deck, which is really cool. So, let's uh, get this going, and why is this taking so long to get me to the part where I get to choose what team? Yeah, I know, do not listen to his words, I got it. Even though Kaiba, that is a badass suit you are wearing, I love the blue eyes thing. The armor's cool. Simon, you look just like you did in the other game, maybe a little less blue. A little more blue? No, you have yellow clothes this time around, that's the difference. Good for you. 
All right, so we're gonna side with the Lancastrian, Lancastrians, not the Yorkists. The Yorkists are on their own. How disappointing. Well, yeah, I made my choice, so now you leave. I'm gonna go join Yugi now. Okay, I know our cutscenes aren't over, everybody. Now we get to see the world map. And we get to go talk to Yugi himself. Which is over here. And there's Yugi. Uh, I think that's Joey on his right. And he has a priest next to him and he has Simon next to him. Pretty cool. Yes, we will serve you well. Don't worry, Yugi. And trust me, you better join Yugi because his car... I mean, it's... If you're playing this game for the first time, it's better to join Yugi because Kaiba's generals are, for some reason, weaker than Yugi's generals. Yugi's generals are actually pretty tough. So the difficulty spike is much earlier if you pick uh, the bad side first. But if you pick the good side first, the difficulty is still there. This game is not easy. You could you could just get completely destroyed just by being unlucky. It's just like Yu-Gi-Oh! Forbidden Memories. So... And we don't even know what cards we have in our deck because I've never chosen... Ch chosen? Chosen? Chosen. I've never chosen this deck before, so we'll see how that goes. Alright, so we finally docked, and there are only two generals we are allowed to fight. One looks to be grass, and one looks to be kind of ground looking, so let's check them out. So this is our world map, and Weevil Underwood. Weevil Underwood is a forest user, and he uses insect monsters. And Rex Raptor. Rex Raptor is a dinosaur user, he uses a wasteland. As you can see next to their face, there's a number 960 and 854. That is your duelist level or your, your deck level, which is if you have too many powerful cards in your deck, you cannot face that opponent. Luckily, our level, which is way at the bottom uh, next to our name Cooper, is 814, so we can challenge anyone right now. And we're going to challenge on Weevil this episode, so... I might only do one fight an episode depending on how long it takes. This game can be very long or very short depending on how the battle goes. But uh, we'll see. So yes, Weevil has an almost entirely, uh, uh, a field that's almost entirely forest and I guess like three spaces of wasteland just for shits and giggles. So let's see how this goes. Let's just move and then we can summon. So we have a plant, we have a fairy, we have beast warrior, beast warrior, warrior. Interesting. I don't know what makes what with this deck. So I think what I'm going to do is just some... Wait, no. Let's throw away some cards to see if anything actually would have, fu would have fused. And... Uh, yeah, this is just like Yu-Gi-Oh! Forbidden Memories where you can fuse a bunch of monsters together. That should make Bean Soldier. That should throw away Bean Soldier. That should throw away that. And that should throw away that. Battle Ox is a very powerful card, so I think it's good to just have one. In this game, you want to move your cards to attack your opponent's deck leader. That's where you can take away their life points. His deck leader is Basic Insect. We have Wolf Axe Wielder. And you can move your cards one space at a time. However, if your cards are on a space that they um, enjoy, I guess you could say, where they get a 500 point power boost, like, uh, like our Axe Wielder here, if you flip them face up, they can move two spaces. But since we don't want to give away what we have, we're not going to do that. We're going to play this spell card. And then we're going to flip it and move over here, and that's just going to do 100 damage to him. Honestly, it's not the most important move in the game, but we're just doing it for fun. Plus, since we used a spell card, we didn't use any of our level... Um, whenever you summon a monster, it takes away from your level that you're allowed to summon. If you look under our life points, there's a number 3. And, oh, we were able to defeat his giant flea, that was good. In this game, there are battle animations, and for the first episode at least, or for non-repeat battles, I'm just going to let them play and let you guys enjoy the animations that they come with. So there's the giant flea. And since it attacked us, it gets to attack first. And it's draining all our blood. Pretty graphic, actually. Wow. I, I've never seen this one, so that's kind of weird. But our battle ox is much stronger than that, and he wants his blood back, so fuck him. There we go. Ooh, and with the uppercut. Nice. So we destroyed the giant flea, no baby. Pretty easily too, so that's kind of nice. And that was the end of the battle. So yeah, he attacked us, he got his own monster destroyed, but since he attacked us, our monster is now face up. He knows what it is, obviously. So we can move two spaces now. So let's move up one. Your deck leader can only move one space. Um, ooh, Warrior with Pyro makes uh, Flame Swordsman, I believe. That's pretty cool. But for now, we're just going to summon our... Brute Kaiser in face-up attack and try to get to his death leader. 
Because if you attack the deck leader, that's that's direct damage in this game. That's like attacking your opponent directly. So we're gonna let Weevil try to, I guess, Weevil is, <laughs> weave his way out of here. Whoa! Weevil just summoned one of his strongest monsters, which is the Quagar Hercules. Quagar Hercules in this game has 2400 attack on a force field, 1900 normally. And that made this battle a whole lot more complicated, because now I don't think I can beat that thing. At least not with the deck. Well, I don't even know if I can beat that thing. I don't know what cards I have. But for now, we are in trouble, so we'll see how this goes. I'm not too worried, people, but it is kind of scary that he was able to defeat our Root Kaiser, which I thought was a pretty strong card. It's a card Joey used to use all the time. Uh, let's see. Battle Ox. Maybe we can force him into an uncomfortable situation. I wonder if Rock and Ice Water... Because this is a female card. I wonder if it, if it still makes Mystic Sam like in the old days. I'm almost willing to risk it, but I don't think it'd be strong enough. Huh... Yeah, this did not go as planned. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start going on the retreat, or start retreating. We're gonna summon both Hanawa and Ice Water to see if it makes Mystic Sand. No, it does not. So yeah, some of the fusions from the old game do not transfer over, and we're gonna ask our Battle Ox to back off, and hopefully he can defend us. Okay, I just lost signal there for a second. I don't know why. That was kind of weird, but I'm back. Hopefully, I'm back. Yeah, yeah. It looks like we're all good people. So, ooh, he's going to try and surround me. That's kind of what the AI likes to do when you see them move in that kind of direction. So, knowing that he's going to try and surround us, I think... Ooh, I think I have a good fusion for us. We'll put this beast here, and then we'll have Ice Water try to fuse with it. Perfect, the Nekogol number two, just like from the old games, everybody. So, Nekogol number two can actually hold off the Quagar Hercules, which is good to keep in mind. And I want Battle Ox to get closer, so we're going to move it right here. We're going to move ourselves forward, even though that's kind of risky, and we're going to see if that card he has face down is strong enough to defeat us. The Weevil likes to hide in the corner because he has a Ritual Monster in his deck that he likes to summon. So we'll see if he tries to... Oh my god. Oh, he has a Dungeon Worm. That's dangerous. Dungeon Worm's effect in this game, the reason it's an effect monster, is that there is Labyrinth Field where you're not allowed to pass it, but Dungeon Worm is allowed to pass it, so... Yeah, just keep that one in mind. It's kind of a threat, so you don't want to fight that. Let's see what else this deck has. Absolutely nothing. Huh. Let's throw away most of our cards. And this should make the Flame Swordsman, which I really like. Yeah, okay, good, good, good. Okay, cool. We were able to make the card I wanted. And we're going to push through straight to his monster. Have Nekogal destroy Dungeon Worm. And we'll, we'll fall back with our Flame Swordsman and have it protect us. In this game, Flame Swordsman does have an effect, but it is kind of useless to us here. Flame Swordsman's effect on uh, in this game is that it gains 300 attack points whenever it fights a dinosaur monster. I know, kind of weird, but kind of worthless of a ability, but... It'll come in handy against Rex, I guess, so when we get to that point, we'll see. Ooh, he, his thing got scared. He didn't even move it. And now he's playing the defensive route. As you can see, this game is kind of complicated. Like, there's a lot of different moves you can make, and you can try to trick your opponent into attacking you. It's, it's interesting, to say the least, but I do not know what to do. So we have an insect. That's kind of interesting. We have an insect in this deck. A beast, a rock, thunder, a machine. I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna move our flame so oh, no, no, no. I wanna try and attack this monster with something else to see what it does. The reason we can't summon this level four is because our summoning level that the star with the three on it says we can only summon level threes. The summoning level will gain every it will gain three levels every turn. So if you don't summon a monster, I can summon a level six next turn. Uh, or if I just play a spell card, because spell cards don't count as monsters. Uh, but yeah, that's basically what that is. If I play this level 2, I'll be able to summon a level 4 next turn. See how my summoning level is only 1 now. And we're going to go on the offensive. He played a spell card in defense mode to bait us. Whenever he plays a spell or trap and we run over it, uh, it does nothing. It just wastes our, our spaces. But luckily, he did not put up any defenses, so we will be able to destroy him. What the heck? He was going at me with a petite mop. I mean, Petit Moth can be very good because, you know, it, it can summon something pretty powerful, but 
I mean, not on the offensive. That was a horrible move. Even our Flying Swordsman is going to destroy that thing. So, let's get a plan together. I think we're about to do 2400 damage, which would be very good. Oh, if I still had my Battle Walks, we could have fused it with this. That would have been awesome. Um... I don't know anything that fuses with an insect. I think insects are pretty lame in that sense. Uh, Flame Swordsman's the best choice there. What we're gonna do is we're gonna move here. And we're gonna start fusing things just for fun. So we got our Mystic Horseman as our strongest attacking monster, so that'll be the last thing we summon. We're gonna do Machine with Beast. I think that makes something, but it makes something useless. With Thunder, with Insect with these. So this is a useless fusion, I just wanted to do it for fun. Should make like, yeah, Dice Armadillo, which is nothing. And good. So first, Flame Sword can kick the shit out of the Teat Moth for me. Wait for it. Of course we're gonna see this animation. I freaking love the Flame Swordsman, so. I used to use Joey's deck when I was a kid. I had the starter deck. I was a loser, but I loved it. So, bam. And it was impossible to summon that card, so. Kind of funny. And there goes his Petite Moth. Good job, Flame Swordsman. And with that, we did a thousand damage. How much life points does this guy have? 26? Ooh, we can almost win. Let's attack him directly for 2400 damage, and then we're gonna take a little risk. It's not really that risky, but I'm, I wanna win in this turn if possible. We're gonna let our Mystic Horseman attack. Oh, that was a mistake. So, he had a Hunter Spider, level 5. Normally 1600 attack, but now it has 21. And it's going to kick our butts. Mr. Horseman can't do crap against that. Though, I want to see the animation. I've never seen Mr. Horseman Sight Slash. Damn. The fact that that can't kill a spider is very scary. And the spider does... What, is it just going to give me a hug? Oh, no, it's going to... Okay, he's doing the Spider-Man 1 thing from the PS1 game, so that's kind of weird. But whatever. He destroyed our Mystic Horseman, I got greedy. Luckily, we should still be able to win next turn, because we have a lot of life points, and we just need to do 200 more damage to him. But, I don't know. We'll find out. He's still trying to run, he's trying to set up defenses, but our Nekogal should be able to defeat him. And he, he got frozen with that Quagar Hercules, he doesn't even want to use it. So, first, let's try to win. In case that was a trap party displayed, we'll find out right now. And... Nope, we won the duel. We did it, everybody. Pretty interesting duel. It gave you guys a good idea of what uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! Duels to Roses is about. And after you beat an opponent, you get prize cards. You can win up to three prize cards, which uh, you press square, triangle, and circle to stop the wheel. If you get three prize cards that are all the same that are not fake trap, you get a bonus card that is usually very powerful. So, keep that in mind. So, I'm gonna try and time this, even though I'm not good at timing it. But we'll see. Damn, I got fake trap. I want a giant flea, because that card's not bad. Okay, Petite Moth, that card could come in handy. And the thing for the insects, okay. We're not adding any of that into our deck, it's just kind of cool that we have it. So, I think that's good enough for an episode, everybody. Next time, we'll be taking on uh, Rex Raptor, and since we were able to win a, a rose card, a white rose card, now I can show you what that means for us. So we win the card, and it opens up two new opponents, which uh, we will be looking at another time. First, we're going to fight Rex, so don't worry about those two, uh, but we'll do that next time. Thank you all for watching, and uh, goodbye.